glad that people are having this uh, weekly vigil here to bear in mind the ongoing crimes being committed in Venezuela by various foreign powers, chiefly my own government, the United States, and very much also the UK and Germany and other countries. And um, I was just in New York City uh, where uh, there were a whole bunch of people who have been occupying the well, not occupying, but living in the Venezuelan embassy in Washington, D.C., at the invitation of the Venezuelan government, um, and uh, without electricity or running water, because that was shut off. And this is what they're doing there. Chavez was elected like every time he ran when his socialists took power that's when the changes began the opposition started attacking every forward move but reforms went ahead the people's welfare improved a land of such riches that had always gone to so few was reaching places ignored since 1492 in venezuela poured into the streets to stop the coup back then they got the man that they elected back to power again the bolivarian revolution became famous worldwide soon other socialist governments swept in at a red tide between the cuban doctors and the venezuelan oil millions got medical care millions tilled the soil of venezuela Bush began the sanctions, Obama imposed more, a slow-burning, destabilizing economic war. Following the formula of the Chicago Boys team, used in many places to make economies scream. Oil prices plummeted, foreign holdings locked, invasions being planned, negotiations blocked in Venezuela. revolution to Venezuela today, from the Seminoles to Salvador Allende. Look at their ankles, you'll see the chains, imperial vampires, open veins, those who stand up to the business elite, who cannot stand to see the workers in the driver's seat in Venezuela. In Venezuela. Thank you. Um, back in the 1970s, when the same kinds of uh, tactics were being used against the government of Salvador Allende in Chile, in uh, 1973, there was, of course, a CIA-backed coup. And then, a few months after that, the Chilean Air Force's uh, jet engines arrived for repair, where they always got repaired, where all Rolls-Royce engines for jet engines get repaired, at a repair shop in a factory in Scotland. And I'll do one more song, which is a story about that a labor action that took place in Scotland, which we learned only two years ago had a big impact on things on the ground in Chile, more than was known at the time. Jet fighters bombed the palace. We all watched it on TV. The 11th of September, 1973. All across the world, People cried in vain as we heard stories of the students being tortured and slain. Stories of the workers, shop stewards, and the rest being slaughtered at the new dictator's behest. Labor groups condemned it, said we were on the workers' side, including all the engineers of East Kilbride. People organized the boycott of General Pinochet, who had overthrown Allende. 
where the hawker hunter jet. Then a few months later, March of 74, Bob Fulton came to work at the Rolls-Royce factory floor. He looked at the orders that had come in that day and found crates with jet engines from Chile. Jet engines from the Air Force across the ocean wide sent to be repaired in East Kilbride. It didn't take a minute for Fulton and his mates to come to the decision they would not touch these crates. Soon 4,000 Rolls-Royce workers voted they agreed to stand with the Chileans in their hour of need. Management decried them, the Tories screamed and cussed, but the Hawker Hunter engines were left to sit and rust. Nowhere else on earth were workers qualified to repair the engines sitting there in East Kilbride. It's often hard to know if you've changed anything a whit, but decades later a Chilean general would admit for a time in Santiago, there were no fighters in the sky because the whole Chilean Air Force had not one jet that could fly. They may not have changed the world, this group of Union engineers, but these crates of metal sat corroding for four years. So here's to British labor, how for four years it tried to do what could be done from East Kilbride. Jet fighters bombed the palace. We all watched it on TV. The 11th of September, 1973. Thank you. So I do one more? I, I, I don't know what you have programmed in here, but um, I'm playing tonight at 8 p.m. at Treff International with the Wrath Mines, if you want to come hear a concert. And uh, maybe you can tell by my accent where I'm from, but uh, this is a song about that place. When you're working two jobs and living in a tent, when a house costs a million bucks and you can't pay the rent, when politicians say they'll help, but it keeps getting worse each time the landlord lobby pulls the strings off the purse when the human right to housing isn't even part of the debate you know you're living in a failed state when millions of citizens are spending half their lives locked up in a prison for trying to survive when laws must be broken just to have a place to stay when the prisons pay the senators to look the other way if you have to be a criminal to put food upon your plate you know you're living in a failed state when you're facing climate breakdown when the trees are all on fire when half the country's underwater when a climate change denier runs the nation Opposition party votes for oil rigs and pipelines. It's not so much a country as it is a corporation. Buckling under its weight, you know you're living in a failed state. When your nation is an empire facing daily blowback, and the only thing your leaders can think to do is attack bipartisan consensus that we need to spend. 700 billion before the year's end on a military budget to make America great. You know you're living in a failed state. When almost every day some psycho with a gun has to open fire on a crowd before it's done. When a music festival becomes a free fire zone and all they can say is it's okay now he was acting alone. Buy some armor, pray to God behind the gate, you know you're living in a failed state. You know you're living in a failed state. You know you're living in a failed state. Thank you. Yeah.
I'll do. I'm not singing at the rally that's coming up. I don't think, but uh, but they need help with their sound system. I'm going to try to help them. It was horrible, but maybe it's better this one they're using now. But uh, if I were singing at that rally, I would sing this song, which they apparently keep on playing at their rallies through the sound system. Listen to me, friends, from New York to California. Consider for a moment Sulamania, the last city volunteered will often see before. They hiked over the mountains and joined the war for the freedom of the people of Rojava. The enclave defended by RPGs and guns, wielded by Rojava's daughters and sons, along with scores of those who've come from far and near, who learned to fire mortars so they could fight right here for the freedom of the people of Rojava. What makes a person go from Occupy Wall Street to marching through the desert with blisters on their feet to risk life and liberty to face Islamic State knowing that martyrdom would likely be their fate for the freedom of the people of Rojava. Something worth defending isn't hard to find, but not many will go off and leave their homes behind to go train on the mountain with the YPG to go join somebody's struggle out of solidarity for the freedom of the people of Rojava. The blood of many folk has been spilled along the way, including several martyrs from the USA. So remember Robert Grote and Michael Israel, how old Todd Jordan McTaggart, how they lived and how they fell. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. For the freedom of the people of Rojava. Vielen Dank. Shukran. Tusen Tag. Merci.